Hi there, I've decided I'd uh, talk about my bike lights, or bike lights in general. Um, in this box I've got all dynamo lights, bottle dynamos, I've got no hub dynamos for wheels, just bottle dynamos. That's a union. Now, the thing with dynamo lights is these days you shouldn't use these old ones unless you're going to use a battery one, which I've got in this box, all battery ones, alongside it. The reason being, when you stop pedalling, you have no lights, which leaves you rather vulnerable on a, let's say, a dark country road, which isn't lit, especially on such roads. So, um, uh, I wouldn't use these sorts of lights personally without at least a rear battery light. And the other thing you've got to be aware of if you're considering using these is that these dynamos, these bottle dynamos, they rub on your tyre. And they can, in some cases, um, make it a little harder to pedal and they can wear the side of your tyre down. So, if you're going to use them, you use them at your own risk. Hello Nemo. Camera's on again, isn't it? Camera hog. <laughs> you know, I've got various types of dynamo lights and type and ages. You now, here's the old Sturmy Archers. I like these ones. Mudguard lights. I believe that is actually a brand new one. Because you can still buy them. So you can still, um, pardon me, you can still use them. But I just wouldn't personally recommend using them alone. Anyway, yeah, that's that box dealt with. I've got some brand new dynamos in here as well. So. That's a brand new one, it's just got battered from being stored in here. I've got several like that. These were cheap though, and they're not very good. So I find the way they spring these, this part of the bottle often has ended up on the spokes. So we chuck it over there, because that's a piece of junk. <laughs> that, I think I bought that one brand new. Yes, I did. Yeah, I bought that brand new with that mudguard light I had in my hand. <coughs> with that one. I bought that brand new with that. That I took off the bike before I sold it. I do like this design of light. That's my favourite design of headlamp. The old bullet style. That's an old Union. I've got a pair of Subite lights. Subites, is it? I'm not sure. If anyone out there is French and can correct me on that one, please do. There's the front one. And uh, contrary to pop contrary to popular belief that um dynamo lights you have to pedal like hell to get them to light up. If you wire them correctly and you have good connections and especially a good ground connection, you don't have to. You could cruise along at a few miles an hour and they'll um, light up perfectly. So, uh, yeah. Um, should we move on to the battery lights? Slide that out of the way. Got a glimpse of my bike stand from the previous video. I'm on the lounge floor. Just makes life easier. Anyway, here we go with my box of assorted battery lights. I've got some from the 60s and 70s. I'm not actually sure when these first ever ready rear guard lights came out. But I know these are still quite popular to sell on eBay. They don't go for a great deal of money, especially ones that have been damaged like that, but I could probably still get a couple of pounds for that on eBay if I wanted to. I did have loads like this. 
and of this style, the Mark II, I believe that is, Mark II, oops, ever ready. I like, I do like these, because they're quite robust, pretty tough. I've dropped quite a few of these no end of times, and they're not damaged, and they still work. Unlike a lot of cheaper modern lights, where you drop them on the floor and they'll break into a thousand pieces. It's the same with these. I had one of these when I was a teenager at school, and I had a rear one fall off my bike. I can't remember how it fell off. I went over a bump in the road, and that just flew off the bike and broke into its component pieces. The lens came off, the reflector came off, the bulb flew out, and the actual two halves of the case, because these are, uh, if I can do it with one hand, nope, they sort of open up at the top here and they're hinged at the bottom, but that case broke in half. And all I did was take the thing back together, literally with sticky tape, and put a new bulb in from another light and a couple of batteries, and the bloody thing still worked perfectly. So yeah, you can't really beat these old lights for being robust and tough. And oddly, a lot of these old star lights will still sell on eBay. People still seem to like using them. The only downside is they're a bit big, bulky and ugly. <laughs> I had a set of these when I was younger as well. Another set are ever ready. And you just got your cheap lights like this. Suitable if you just want something to be seen by if you're in a lit area like a a street lit area like a um city or a town or a village. Anywhere there's street lights and you just want to be seen. Just get yourself a set of lights like this. I wouldn't expect it to um survive a fall though. As I can feel from the plastic, that's quite cheap and brittle. So I bet if I dropped that on a concrete floor, that would break. Then you got what you have, um, I'll try that again. Then you have the common, modern LEDs. I'm not too sure how modern these are, though. It's a cat eye. And this has got green LEDs. And last time I read the British Highway Code, you're not actually supposed to use the green LEDs now. They have to be white light at the front and a red one at the rear. So I'm, I think you could get away with using that alongside a white light, but uh, I don't think you'd get away with using it alone. And besides, I find they're not very bright, them green ones. Yeah, well, as you can see, I've got a big box full of lights. Collected these up over the years. Some of them my mate Biggles had given to me when he sorted his workshop out after he quit uh, quit doing mountain bikes and concentrated on the old bikes. They're always handy to keep. If I ever sell a bike I can always throw one on a bike as a little bonus extra thing. Um, most of these lights, you see, Talking about bike lights, I always see cyclists at night, adults as well as kids, riding around with no lights on. In fact, a number of times I've been startled by them because they've been wearing black clothes as well and they're almost invisible on the road. But you can pick lights up quite cheap, as I'd mentioned in my last video. You get them little silicon lights, frog lights I think is the nickname for them, or the official name, something like that. And they're cheap as hell, but very effective. So, and you don't need tools to fit them. But for most of these lights, the only tool you need is a screwdriver. Usually a Phillips screwdriver. Especially for modern LEDs like that, for the brackets. And they just clamp around the handlebar and around the seat bar. You don't need to be an Einstein or a cycle mechanic to uh, fit them. And they're not really that expensive. I mean, you can pick them up cheap as chips on eBay. Most stores that sell such stuff, like Wilco, 
I'm not sure how far Roy's go, but that's a local sort of home hardware store around in my area. QDs, anywhere like that would sell cheap bike lights. Um, I think that's about, yeah, that's about it, I think. I'm probably fluffing my words a bit more than usual, because I am pretty tired as it's uh, coming up to 5 to 1 in the morning. And I might have to go and punch my battery charger again, because the uh, transformer in it is humming like hell. So I think it might be time to invest in a new one. But at the moment, that's all I've got, and that's what charges the batteries up for the camera. So without that, I've got no camera. <laughs> Unless I invest in lots and lots of uh, non-rechargeable AA batteries, which don't seem to last as long. I did have a small battery charger somewhere, but I don't know where that is. I'll have to find that up and use that one, most likely, for the time being, until I can get another big. Let's see it, just sitting there on the um, coffee table right in front of us, right in the centre of the screen buzzing away quite loudly but every time I tap it, it stops so I'll give that a tap when I'm done with this video anyway, 10 minutes of over 10 minutes now of uh, boring you to death with bike lights and light safety though I will quickly mention if I stand up which is another this is another pet peeve of mine when I see it People who fit lights to a bike and don't line them up properly. Really annoys me. I've seen people put lights on the handlebars and they're like pointing directly down at the floor. And I'm like, what's the point? No point to it. If you're going to put lights on your bike, at least make sure they're lined properly. You'll find with most modern lights as well that the rear ones will only bolt around the seat post. Well, they're supposed to only bolt around the seat post you get clever and keep loads and loads of various bike like brackets like I do you can usually make something up to put them on the rear fork which is what I usually do my setup on my main bikes is usually a light on this fork or seat stay I should say get it right the one on this one which I'm not sure I'll be able to do is the brake cable runs down that side and one up there that's the setup I had on my Gary Fisher. And I had two good lights up on the handlebars on the Gary Fisher. Which I'll invest in with this bike later on, which I'm sure I've already mentioned on another video. Anyway, 13 minutes, long enough. Thanks for watching. And remember, please like, please subscribe. Please dislike if you disliked it, like the video, and uh, any comments, leave them in the comments section below. Bye.